Welcome back to Rockstars Uncensored with Laura Hargrove. I would first like to thank uh, two sponsors of mine. One is Big Willie's ATP, where everyone leaves with a smile. They carry all natural products ranging from insomnia to energy, um, all that good stuff. So go ahead and, and go in and see exactly what they all carry. I would also like to thank Trips Tattoo World on Main Street in Mandan. With 30 years experience, you're sure to be very happy with what you have. Again, Trips Tattoo World. And today we have Mr. Chris DK from Dead Star Assembly. And I will get him on the line. Hi, Chris. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm here, Laura. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'd like to thank you again for being part of my show. Oh, you're welcome. I'm excited to do it. Good. Um, <clears throat> I just kind of want to start out um, asking you, how long have you played drums, and was that the first instrument you ever learned to play on? Um, I've been playing drums for about 17 years now, since I was 10 years old. Um, I actually started on guitar. I don't really play great guitar, but I kind of dabble around with it. Um, but drums just kind of came naturally to me, and I just picked up on that right away and stuck with it. I used to play drums. I wish I would have never quit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now I'm trying to teach myself the bass. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, okay, now... I, you said that you were also a part of um, a band called Jenner, Jenna Torturers? The Jenna Torturers, yeah. Um, you know, they've been around for almost 20 years now. It's, they're kind of a legendary group in uh, the underground scene. Uh, a lot of very high stage performance, a lot of fetish and kind of sexual deviance in the stage show, so it, it gets fun. What do you, could you explain exactly what that means, like fetish and and so on and so forth on stage? Um, well, we have, like, uh, we do some suspension work in the show. Um, you mean, like, have people dangling down? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, cool. So it, it gets fun, and uh, the last tour, we had an aerialist tour with us. She did a lot of work on the hoop in the air. And then towards the end of the show, we, you know, we have uh, guys come up on stage and we put their balls in the humbler. The we what? Have, uh, a little device where we we clamp their balls down in it, and uh, so that have them bend over so they can't stand up. Where did you come up with? It? Okay, who came up with that idea? Uh, that would be Jen. She's kind of the ringmaster of it all. I'm new to the group. Uh, you know, she's been doing it for quite a while, so she has her stage show down. But it was a really fun tour. I'm looking forward to going back out with them again. So she, so that band has a... I've never heard of the band. That's why I'm kind of curious. So it's a female singer. Yes, yeah. And so you could probably say she's like a dominatrix. Yeah, yeah, it definitely has that dominatrix vibe. Well, that's interesting. And you said underground. Are we talking like punk? Uh, no, it's kind of industrial rock, industrial metal, um, along the same lines as Dead Star almost. Uh, both bands are based out of Florida. So there's there's a pretty good fetish scene in Florida, and both bands have kind of thrived because of that. That's unusual. I have never been to a concert where they have fetish, like S&M fetish things, Never. That's really interesting. How long is, uh, and you said they've been around for about 20 years. How about Dead Star Assembly? I know you started there in 2008. So how long has that yeah, band been I joined around? the band in 2008. Uh, Dead Star has been around since 2002, though. Oh, I see. Okay. Now, <laughs> now Chris, now you, do you wear eyeliner every day? Almost every day. Because I see you, uh, you know, 
and you have several like different levels of how you do and wear your makeup. I've seen pictures. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a picture of you without eyeliner on. Um, you go from just like the traditional eyeliner and then you go into more of like your stage makeup. Do you? Right. Um, you know, I always is, try to kick it up a notch when I'm on stage, but in everyday life, I'm just going out. I usually have a little bit of eyeliner on. In how long? What made you decide to see? I have a fetish with men with eyeliner, so I'm always curious um, to to why they wear it or what made them, you know, decide to wear it. I know, you know, be, you know, some say it's well, it's rock and roll, but you, you don't see everyone wearing it either. So what age no, about? Um, I started wearing makeup when I was in high school. Just really influenced by, you know, that image and that, you know, gothy kind of culture, I guess. So you were, I would imagine you wore just the eyeliner or did you do the eyes, you know, like sometimes you have like a dark red eyeshadow or a black or something. Did you just stick to the regular eyeliner and save that for the show? Or did you wear that kind of stuff to, you know, the good extravagant um, makeup look? When I started out and, you know, in regular everyday life, I just wear a little bit of eyeliner. Um, I usually save the heavier makeup and extreme eyeshadows for the stage. So how did your parents feel about having their, their son wearing eyeliner? It may have been a little put off at first, but I have really great supportive parents. So, And that helps. They pretty much back me in whatever I choose to do. Well, that's great. I, You know, support from family means so much. Uh, you know, successful people, it seems that that was something that got them to where they were at was family support. Would you agree? With yeah, that? absolutely. I really couldn't have done most of what I've accomplished without help from them. And do you have any Definitely siblings? fortunate in that sense. Do you have any siblings, Chris? Yeah, I have one brother. Younger? Uh, yeah, he's three years younger. And is he into any type of music? Yeah, he's actually an actor. He's into musical theater. Not really the... Like Broadway you know, style? rock and roll, but yeah, yeah, Broadway. Oh. Um, this summer he's out in uh, Utah doing a regional theater for six months, I believe. So you come from a pretty talented family. Does your mom or dad have any type of um, gifts like that? No, they're not really musically inclined at all, so I'm not really sure where I came from. And obviously, same with uh, your brothers in the acting, nothing like that either? Hmm, well, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> now, um... Being I'm friend, uh, friends with both you and Brent Ashley, and I get the biggest kick out of you two. Um, <laughs> um, he had sent out a picture of him, and I don't remember the other guy's name, and they were kissing. And oh, that's he, uh, Abby Max. He, he plays in Jenna Tortures with me. He's the bass player. What was his name? Abby. Abby, yep. And, you know, and then the way you and Brent go back and forth just absolutely kills me. Like how you said, uh, you know, the you two should have children and the black hair tattoos are dominant features. I, I <laughs> just got to, how long have you and Brent been friends? Um, almost three years now. Um, I actually met Brent when I was out at the NAM convention in California a few years back. And we just hit it off right away, and he's become one of my best friends. And so with, it's always trouble when the two of us get together. Oh, oh. It, <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of trouble do you get into? Uh, it's just, you know, just typical Hollywood fun. Um, he's born and raised out there, so whenever I go to visit, he always shows me a good time. 
see, I've never been to L.A. It's been a, a dream of mine to be to go to L.A. I've been to New York, but I've never been to L.A. and I've never been to Vegas. Have you been to Vegas? Yeah, um, I've been to Vegas twice, actually. And did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was fun. Um, definitely a place, you know, it's like the adult Disneyland. Just go to escape for a debaucherous weekend there. It's a good time. Yeah, I'd love to go. It's on my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so is it, is it natural? Uh, I shouldn't say natural. You know, I... Obviously, you and, and Brent and a few of your other friends are very comfortable just pecking another man on the lips. Is, you know, you know, like some people, just because you, you know, give a peck on the lips to the same sex, that doesn't make you gay. No. Um, you know, we all joke around about it, and we're very comfortable with who we are as people and our own sexuality um so, you know it's more of something that's done in jest rather than you know being serious about it kind of like how us girls will just give each other a kiss or whatever when we see each other that kind of yeah yeah we're just fucking around with each other see i see i like that i like men that can that are comfortable enough with their sexuality and that it's okay to have fun like that. Right. You know, some people just get so bent out of shape, and I just don't understand that. But I think it's great. And like I posted on that picture of you, uh, Brent and Abby, that I would love a picture of you and Brent. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? Did you see that I uh, had posted that? Yeah, yeah, I think I do remember seeing that. <laughs> well, is, isn't Brent out in... L.A.? Yeah, he lives out in L.A. Okay. And what, what may, you're in Massachusetts. What, uh, what is the music scene like out in that area? In Massachusetts? Yes. Um, well, where I am, you know, this area actually kind of revolutionized the metal world about 10 years ago. Um, I live right in the spot where, like, Kill Switch Engage and All That Remains, Shadows Fall, and Unearth came out of. Um, kind of the new wave of American heavy metal, some people call it. Um, so you have a big metal and hardcore scene out here. It's not really, like, the dirty rock and roll and, you know, kind of goth industrial scene that you might see out in Los Angeles. or So it's not like Sunset like Strip. Is that what you're saying? No, it's not really like Sunset Strip at all. Um, it's kind of, you know, Western Mass is kind of a small area, a lot of wooded area. There's not a big city around. Um, but the music scene does kind of flourish here. Because I was wondering why you guys hadn't maybe moved out to L.A. And I know that L.A. is, you know, a lot of it is you pay to play or... Um, you, you know, or you don't get, you have to pay them or you don't get paid, period. Is yeah. that one yeah, reason? Yeah, the LA music scene, it's great, but it's kind of oversaturated at the same time. So there's so much. doesn't make it very easy to make it out there. Right, there's so much competition that it's horrible that these, um, you know, talented people have to pay for other people to see them. I, I don't understand that. Yeah, it's just, you know, one of the downfalls of the music industry at this point. And you recently had a photo shoot. Um, and what was your photographer's name? Uh, the photographer I just shot with is Jeremy Saffer. And I see you got yourself some um, Vic Firth. I think that's, I think if I can read my writing right. Um, drumsticks. Now, is, are they endorsers? Do they endorse? Yeah, uh, Vic Firth is one of my endorsing companies. Um, I play Vic Firth sticks, and I'm also endorsed by D-Drum, so I play D-Drum uh, drum set. Now, I re when I was out in L.A., um, I had picked up um, 
sticks that were uh, Vic Firth, and they were Tommy Lee's signature, and I, I bought them at CBGB's, and I still have them. Oh, really? Yeah. I wonder if they'd be worth any money. I don't know. You'd have to look into that, I guess. But they are very good sticks. So yeah, do you... Uh, you know, Vic Firth is one of the best companies out there. I've uh, played them for years, and it, I just wouldn't have the same feel if I wasn't using them. And how do you find sponsors? Do they come to you, or do you go out and, you know, pound the pavement like I do for sponsors for my show? Yeah, you definitely have to go out and make good contacts. You know, it's, this industry is all about networking. Uh, like I mentioned before, every year I try to get out to the NAM convention mm-hmm. in California. Uh, it's the biggest music industry trade show in this country, at least. Well, did you know... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Didn't mean to be uh, rude. Um, yeah, and you just try to meet with all the, the company sponsors and reps and you know, hit it off with them, and hopefully you can score yourself a good deal. Now, did you know that they ha- they hold a NAM convention in Tennessee as well? Yeah, the summer NAM is out in Nashville. Um, I've never been out to that one. I guess it is a lot smaller, but same kind of idea. Yeah, I I just recently found that. I always thought NAM was just, you know, once a year L.A. and that was it. But I was a little surprised that they had it in Tennessee as well. Yep, the, the summer NAM is out in Tennessee. You don't really hear much about that because it is a smaller show. Uh, most of the companies debut their new products at the winter NAM in California. But summer NAM is, you know, still same kind of idea. Now, how did you... Okay, you obviously had joined Rockstar, or, I'm sorry, Dead Star Assembly. Um, how did how did you get hooked up with that band? Uh, with Dead Star, I was a huge fan of Dead Star since they started. Um, I had a friend that lived down in Florida, and when they were first coming out in the local scene, he mm-hmm. you know, sent me their music, and I was immediately turned on to it. And I you know, was a... a huge fan for years um when they would tour in my area up here i would always go out to the shows and i kind of made friends with them and i kept in contact with dro online and when cygnus the last drummer left back in 2008 um dro contacted me and i made an audition tape and sent it down to them and it just kind of worked out and everything fell into place well congratulations thank you now um <clears throat> does my, <laughs> I know this is going to be just a stupid question, um, but does Massachusetts get horrible winters? It can be. Um, this past winter was kind of mild for the most part, but it can get pretty brutal here. Because um, I had an offer to move to Maryland. Um, uh-huh. And I guess it's... If you're a little like, further south in Maryland, it probably doesn't get as bad, but you still uh, get some of that winter weather. Um, like just, he's, I think it was like three hours from New York City. Yep. Okay. So I was just kind of wondering if the, if the weather was very similar to what, I'm in North Dakota and we get a lot of times horrible winters. Yeah, it actually probably gets a little worse out there. I actually lived out in Wisconsin for a couple of years. And so that was just brutal. I would never, ever want to go back there. Yeah, I would think, honestly, I think uh, North Dakota has got to be worse. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. So how many albums has Dead Star Assembly made? Uh, We've released three full-length albums. The first one was self-titled Dead Star Assembly. The second record, Unsaved, came out in 2006. That was kind of a big breakthrough. And then in uh, 2010, we released Coat of Arms. Right now, we're writing and recording for our next album, Adorned in Thorns, which we hope to have out this fall. And do you plan on uh, a tour afterwards? Yeah, we definitely want to hit the road. Um, We didn't really play too much last year. We went out out for a week with Combi Christ. But other than that, we didn't do really a full tour. We've been kind of working on writing and demoing for the new album. Uh, we do have a couple things in the works right now, 
but nothing confirmed, so I can't really give too many details. Sure. Now, I would imagine you you have a booking agent or something or someone like that that handles um, that thing, or do you ban members? Uh, we do have an agent that we work with. Uh, I kind of take on some of the booking myself. Um, really depends on you know, what we're trying to work out. Because I have... I don't know if, you know, when you tour, do you tour all over the United States or do you usually generally stay kind of in a, a certain region? We've toured all over the U.S. Um, a couple of years ago, we got over to Europe for the first time. That was an amazing experience. We played a big festival over there. What part uh, of Europe? We did a festival over in Germany. Wow. That would be yeah, it was, fun. It was, it was great. That would be fun. I, because the reason why I'm asking is, you know, I have a lot of um, acquaintances, friends, so on and so forth, that actually bring bands into North Dakota. So that's kind of why I was asking that, is if you were ever going to work your, your way west, that um, I could actually do you get you guys booked. You know, anywhere from Fargo to Bismarck to if we have another rock fest. I do a yeah, lot that'd of, be awesome. Um, I do a lot I of think, that kind of stuff, too. Yeah, I, I believe the tour before I joined the band that they did, um, they did play a show in North Dakota, but I, I don't completely remember. I wasn't there for that. Uh, but, yeah, you know, we would love to play all over. So hopefully with the new album and the new touring cycle, we'll have a chance to do that. Yeah, because uh, one of the guys, well, he just had Dizzy Reed in. Um, he's brought uh, Bullet Boys, uh, I mean, a whole bunch of people. So there's a lot of areas all the way from Fargo to Bismarck to a couple other that we could actually get you guys um, some book dates. So if you ever... Yeah, if you, that, would, that would be great. You know, yeah, we're ready to set up our... Uh tour we'll, we'll definitely be in touch yes because i would love to see you guys live and it'd be an honor to meet you in person well thanks yeah that'd be great okay um chris let me we are gonna play your song called fyg um and take a short break and we'll be right back with chris dk